So, Google Stadia is a streaming service that launched about one year ago from when I'm uploading this, but has had a lot of issues and problems, but I felt like I actually wanted to talk about it in a review. I know what a lot of people are going to say, but Fuzu, isn't Google Stadia trash and dead? And I would slightly agree that at one point it was trash. I wouldn't agree on dead. My opinion has changed over the last six months of using the service. So a lot of things have changed since I've started the service, and when I get to those points, they were originally going to be a little different when I was starting to write this. I'll talk about that. But I was interested in it from the start. The idea of cloud game streaming isn't inherently a bad one in my eyes. I think that people have misalignments with it. I didn't buy into it at first because the rumors were it was going to launch really poorly, and I'm going to be honest here, it did launch poorly. Uh, but the launch is noted to be really, really bad. However, YouTube Premium ended up giving me a three-month trial of Google Stadia, and I ended up liking it even though at first it didn't work with the main browser I used, which is Brave. However, that did change, and honestly, it's improved a lot, enough for me to actually say that I want to stick with it. Google Stadia launched on November 19th, 2019, and had an incredibly hard launch. It wasn't great. It was a new endeavor by Google, one of the world's largest brands, and I mean hell, we're watching this video on a Google-owned platform. Google had tested it with Project Stream in 2018 and then launched it a year later. It actually tried the Project Stream beta for, um, I think it was Assassin's Creed Odyssey? And it worked relatively well, it was a little buggy, but it was a beta, I, you know. And also they picked probably the worst game they could have for, <laughs> for testing latency. But, I think that it does what other services like OnLive and Gakai couldn't do and services like PlayStation Now completely lack, which is brand new games that are launching on a service that is relatively fast. And there was a point where, yeah, nothing launched for a whole fucking month on Stadia, which was honestly kind of embarrassing. Don't know why the fuck they did that. And that's been kind of a big problem with Google. But since then, it's been pretty consistent on releasing games every month. I have noticed the store has been kind of full up. They've added pre-orders. There's been AAA games like Doom Eternal and Avengers and stuff that I've played before, but I actually ended up replaying through Stadia, like Sekiro, Doom 2016, um, Metro 2033, Red Dead 2, Hitman 2016, Highline Miami. I don't want to be honest here, it's impressive how well it works. I mean, it works on my phone, on my shitty MacBook, which does not have specs to run Sekiro, and my TV. Although, when I did get into Stadia again about six months ago, it really didn't work with my main browser, Brave. And I get why it wouldn't work on stuff like Safari and Firefox, I get that. But Brave is a fork of Chromium, which in and of itself is a fork of Chrome, Google's own browser that powers Stadia. It's weird that it didn't work there at launch, and didn't work for at least, I'm gonna say about seven months. Seven, eight months, I'd say. But that changed over time, and now it works perfectly fine. I use Brave all the time, and using Stadia is no issue. And honestly, it interested me after I started to use it. I think I can actually make a decent case for the future of Stadia on why I like it, and why I think at least for some games this coming generation, I will probably end up buying them on Stadia over Xbox or PC. Stadia Pro is Google's version of PlayStation Plus, Xbox Live Gold, and Nintendo Switch Online. And I actually think it's better than a lot of the more recent games that Sony or Microsoft have been putting on either PlayStation Plus or Gold. The last few months, stuff like Dead by Daylight, the entire Metro series, uh, Elder Scrolls Online, Hitman 2016, uh, the Serious Sam Collection, Destiny 2, all that have been on there. However, it's also Google's biggest mistake, I think. When Stadia launched last year, it was the only way to gain access to Stadia itself, was through Stadia Pro. And it wasn't until around June that you could use the free version of Stadia. I do think there is a good reason to be a free member of Stadia, but I'll get to that later. But Stadia Pro really only gives you access to two things. One, 4K streaming with HDR support, and two, free games via Stadia Pro. Would I say that it's worth being a Stadia Pro member? Yeah, if you end up buying the Chromecast Ultra or that new Chromecast that Google put out recently. Although, it's not getting the Stadia app until next year, which is kind of fucking weird. 
But 4K games like Red Dead 2 and the Metro games have looked amazing. And a lot of the free games look pretty solid in 4K. So I would recommend it if you're going that way. And the free games have honestly been just better than everything else Sony's been putting out and Microsoft's been putting out with the Games for Gold program. Now, this and the next point have honestly changed while I've been working on this review. And as of the 8th, this is the current state of everything. This is when I'm recording this. But honestly, when Stadium launched, its biggest competition was xCloud, PlayStation Now, and GeForce Now. And I think it's kind of weird to compare them for different reasons. They're, they're going for different things. Stadia is around new releases and, you know, owning the game, like a, a one-time purchase and there's some free games. And xCloud and PlayStation Now and GeForce Now all kind of work in different ways. GeForce Now works through your library of games that you own on Steam, but some games aren't supported. And then xCloud is Game Pass games and stuff like that. And PlayStation Now is its curated library. However, Amazon Luna was announced and seems to kind of be going after Google's market with Stadia. And honestly, it might be good, it might be worse. Uh, I don't currently have uh, early access. I tried to sign up for it, but I haven't gotten anything back. And I'm gonna get it on the ground floor with that one and give it a shot. I'll do a review of the, the early access when I get it. But I can say I don't like the look of a controller. And that's neither here nor there, but I actually like the Stadia controller. I think that Luna can possibly like light a fire under Google's ass to promote Stadia in a way that can make Amazon nervous. But it requires Google to actually be better with marketing. <laughs> we'll talk about that possibly later. And this also changed since I started writing it. Originally, the only store you could buy the Stadia controller and bundles from was Google's own store. Originally, the only way you could access Stadia when it first came out was buying the $150 bundle, which included the, the Chromecast Ultra, a special controller, and three months of Pro. Eventually, when the three tier launched, that went down to $99.99, and I actually, I, I bought that. I think it's a fine bundle. And now it's launching at Best Buy, which if you're watching this, they have a Black Friday deal for it, where you can get it for $79.99 if you're interested. Now, the current library of games is a little mixed. There's some older games, some games that were big a couple of years ago, and there's some newer games. I think Stadia is starting to get to a point where games are starting to launch day and date with Stadia, uh, such as Cyberpunk 2077, um, Doom Eternal, I believe, launched day and date, uh, Hitman 3, I believe. Yeah, Hitman 3 is launching uh, day and date, Mortals Phoenix Rising. It, a lot more games are coming to Stadia, and that will take, it'll take time, but I think that will be a big draw for a lot of people to see that, hey, I can just instantly load this game up, which has been my enjoyment from it, where it's like, I can just buy the game and not have to download a hundred fucking gigabytes. There's a lot of games I would actually enjoy playing if it was on Stadia. Um, I, I love games like Modern Warfare 2019, but this game is about 250 gigs on PC. If I could avoid downloading 250 gigs and just stream the game, I'd be fucking happy. I'd be fine with that. Now, I think, honestly, the future is going to be pretty solid for Stadia. Uh, cloud gaming is one of those things where it's a, you have to try it to understand it kind of thing. It's something completely different to how modern games work on console, and with games yeah, you know, like the new Call of Duty requiring 260 some odd gigabytes, it's on screen. And the PS5 having like less than 600 available, 600 gigs available. If I could just instantly play that game without having to download a single thing, I would do that in a heartbeat. I would do that in a heartbeat for so many different games right now. Just because because of hard drive spaces. So, uh, a little addendum here before the, uh, the end of the video. Um, Stadia also announced in the last few days that they're ha having like a whole focus for about 400 and some odd new games uh, in 2021. And also, uh, they've said that they've confirmed that yeah, we're not going to be killing, you know, Stadia. We're, we're keeping it around for a while. Uh, they also are starting to plan out 2022. And also, um, they just recently put Hitman 2 
as a uh, pro game along with Everspace, Secret Neighbor, there's a Monster Jam game, and The Breach, which is pretty fucking good. Um, so yeah, I, I just wanted to bring that in there. Um, also, it's coming to iOS finally because of a web browser app instead of having to deal with um, Apple's archaic system. And it's actually coming sooner rather than later, so you can play on iOS soon. Now, to conclude, I'm going to say it. My opinion on Stadia is that I like it. It's truly not for everyone, but for people that are on the fence, should actually give it a shot. Uh, family sharing just came in, a whole bunch of other stuff. A lot of the good games, like pro games, like Hitman and Dead by Daylight, are great. They work incredibly well, and you won't really know it until you try it. Of course, it is dependent on your internet speed. So if you have good internet speed, it'll be pretty great. It'll be pretty consistent. Wi-Fi can be a little iffy, but that's because I have a lot of 2.4 gigahertz stuff. I've got one 5 gig, finally, so I can actually play on Wi-Fi a lot better. But the controller connects through Wi-Fi and it works incredibly well. I think it's a neat little thing for people to try. Again, I have no sponsorship with this video because I know some people will be like, oh, he's a Google show. No, Google has not paid me a single dime for this video. I've had all of this come out of my own wallet, my own paychecks. So if you really like this video and you want to support me, there's a Patreon link down below or there's a join button. I'm going to talk about the, the members in a second. But yeah, I, I've gotten no compensation. I've not given anyone an early ad read for this. I, I didn't even have an ad read for anything, but I didn't give anyone an early copy of a video, except for patrons. So this is my own actual opinion on this. Uh, if this review does relatively well, I'm going to do one on the, the Series X because I'm getting that uh, this Tuesday. But again, folks, this is my opinion. Nobody else's. I'm going to roll to a Patreon outro, but I'll say this. I liked it, and I enjoyed it. I'm going to keep using it, and maybe next year I'll do a second review of year two of Stadia. But anyways, take it easy. I'm going to roll to a Patreon outro, folks. Have a good one. All right, now to our Patreon outro. Um, as you can see, the names are all on the screen here. I've switched to uh, some COD Zombies gameplay just for the end of it because I've been recording a ton of Stadia footage and I wanted to switch up with a new COD game. Uh, working on some new content as well. I, uh, I've been doing some research on a uh, weird sex cult from the 70s and 80s, um, a couple other things as well. But uh, I figured with that, just gonna you know talk about patrons, talk about uh, the patron rewards finally getting finished because I've been busy and also horribly lazy, but that's a different story. At our $10 tier, we have Annie, Amaret, Some Jagass, and Pumpkin Spices. At our $4.99 tier, we have Rainbow Raves Reads. That is a hell of a name for me to try to spell. And then in no particular alphabetical order, <clears throat> at our $1 tier, we have Xeno Tingir V. I'm going to fuck that name up every time. Uh, K.Shay. Josh Boyles, Kim W, and Charlie. Uh, again, I'm working on putting out more content for patrons. I just wanted to mention that before I talk about my uh, channel members. Our two channel members are Waterbender and the Widu Sama. So yeah, the first live stream will happen uh, the first weekend of next month for patrons, where I'm going to go through an older video and kind of talk about uh, certain aspects of it, and you know, t talk about all that while I can and when I can. But with that, I'm going to wrap up the video. Take it easy, have a good night, be safe, and I will see you next time.